Okay, so here's the inverter system. Got the cords and stuff hanging up on the side. Uh, I do have it plugged into the batteries right now, so it's up and running. Okay. And what I got going on is I'm throwing a code right now, a vent. And when we find a vent, so always push exit, exit. Go into enter. System settings. Go into system settings. Go down until it says uh, view fault list. So we read blue view fault list. There's nothing there. View warning list. Warning list says Batmon. This is the battery monitor right here. Okay, and it's saying at the bottom synchronize. Now I can't synchronize it right now because when you disconnect the batteries and hook them back up, it's just going to do it again. So if I go enter, it's going to say please synchronize when battery is fully charged. So yeah, as soon as I disconnect it, it's just going to throw it again. Uh, I'll have to tell you how to synchronize as we go along. So whenever you're working at this, always go exit, exit, exit. And it gets me back to the start so then you know what's going on. So system status, that's the front page. When you go down, it says, you know, CSW4048, this is the SW. So that's the inverter. So there it talks about the, the inverter. It says it's inverting right now, tells the battery voltage and there's nothing going on. So now when we go down again, it says MPP, so that's charge controller. That's an MPP charge controller, okay? So it's, it's there right now. It says not charging, there's no solar panels hooked to it. Battery monitor, it's kind of lost. So like I said, it's throwing a code and it's showing down here, uh, synchronize, and I can't synchronize it. So there it is there, it tells the battery temperature and different things, okay? Go down again, brings us back to start. Now, as I always say, go exit, exit, then I know that you're at the start. Go enter. So, we can go enter system settings. Let's not go there. Let's go into the SW, which is the inverter, right? So, I'm going to go into the inverter. Go into the inverter. Now, when you first bring it, let's go back. When you're in the inverter, so you open it, it's just going to say meters. You're not in advanced settings. You've got to push the first three buttons at the same time. Advanced settings. So, when you go into advanced settings, inverter settings, let's have a look at it. Inverter settings, low battery cutouts. That means it's going to draw your batteries down to 43.5 volts and then the inverter will shut off because the batteries are low. Okay. Now, say you're starting a table saw or a big air compressor, it's going to do that for 600 seconds even at that number before it'll shut down. And then you got uh, high battery cutout, you set that really high. Search, your search is not turned on. Search delay, it's not turned on and then some other time stamps we're not worried about. So we'll go exit, exit again. Go back to start, let's go back, enter. Go into the inverter, go into advanced settings, go uh, inverter settings, we've already just gone through all that, okay. Go back up, charger settings. So when this is hooked up to a generator, this turns into a charger and an inverter, right? So we'll just have a look at it. Battery type, custom, okay, so let's have a look. That's all I can do. Custom settings, we'll go into there. So equalized support is enabled. Uh, I'm actually going to turn it off because I only equalize if it needs it. So bulk voltage, I have it set at 60 volts. So it's going to bulk. That means maximum amount of amps to hit 60 volts. As soon as it hits 60, it's going to go into absorb. Absorb is at 60 volts also. Okay. And then float is at 53. So it's three stages. Bulk, absorb, float. Absorb, I have set at uh -oh, 240 minutes. We'll have to show you that in the next window. Float means it just sits on float uh, for the rest of the day if the generator continues running. Now remember, these numbers are the same numbers that we're going to put in the charge controller. Okay, This is from the solar. All right, Battery temperature compensation, that means when it's 30 below or plus 30, these numbers are going to change just a bit internally to uh, help charge the battery whether it's really cold or really hot. Okay, so it's going to back up one. We go into, so we're into custom settings in this window. So battery capacity, it's a 428 amp hour battery because you have one string. So we're going to change that, 428. It's not real critical if that number's accurate either, by the way. Max charge rate, so we're on the inverter. This is the inverter. It's going to try to charge at I believe it's 90 amps is what it can do. Sometimes generators don't like that. So if max charge rate really bothers your generator, just lower it down a little. Okay. Charge 
cycle, three stage, bulk, absorb, float, right? Uh, temperature, uh, battery temperature, it's set on that compensation. Recharge, it's going to start recharging again at 52 volts. Absorb time, so bulk is max amount of amps it can give it. As soon as it reaches 60 volts, it kicks into absorb. Absorb one then will last up to a maximum of 240 minutes. Add absorb, and then it'll kick out. There'll be days it'll only absorb for, we'll say, 30 minutes, or maybe 90 minutes. 240 is a good number in case it's yucky, cloudy, snowy, okay? Auto charge enabled, yes, right? So it's the generator and a gas, and you start it back up, it's gonna just go right where it left off. Uh, charge block, we don't worry about any of that. AC settings, AC settings is interesting. So this is your, gen we're on the SW, that's the inverter. This is your generator breaker. So we can set that all the way up to 30 or, you know, down. Now, I'm gonna move the number down a bit. I'm gonna say 10, no, I'll go, I'll go 15. Okay, I'm gonna go 15 amps. Low generator volts, 95. So say a table saw or an air compressor starts, it's gonna bring that voltage down for a bit on the generator and then right back up. So 95, there's nothing wrong with that. High voltage, 135. AC, low frequency. I don't know what your generator's like, so I'm gonna bring that down, mm, we'll say 54. And then AC, high frequency, 65 hertz. AC, qualify time. That's how long the generator will run before the inverter pulls in and starts taking power from the generator. So when it says AC in, AC in up here, we're talking about generator feeding it, okay? So I, got, I like those numbers, we'll leave there. AC support, okay. AC support, AC support mode, I'm gonna leave that disabled. And down here, load shave, I'm gonna enable it. So what does that mean? It's gonna help the generator if numbers are, let me just check, the highest I can go is 12. So the highest I can go is 12 because remember the AC in breaker we had at 15 amps. This is a calculation of the 15 amps, it's a few numbers less. So what that means is generator is going to try to pull 15 amps, but anything over 12 the inverter will stop charging. Meaning if I have charging going on and loads like your air compressor, it's going to try to do both at once. But if I have load shave turned on, it shuts off. Uh, the charging portion until it drops below 12 then the charging comes right back we don't look care about uh, the times just leave them alone AC support on uh, SOC that stands for state of charge which this will have a percentage let's go see can we see it so it's saying state of charge is at 100% now these batteries aren't fully charged and things going on so it likes it usually takes three days to kind of even out okay so we have that disabled, we're not worried about it. Okay, we have that disabled, don't worry about it. Now, multi-unit configuration, don't do that. Restore, don't do that. Advanced features, that's getting your way out there in left field, let's not do that either. So exit. Now, let's just back all the way up again. Okay, so exit, exit, enter. Let's go into the inverter. Inverter, let's go into meters. So when it's on meters, we can see what the generator's running at. There's no generator right now. So I can see the generator, what its voltage is, what its hertz is, how many watts we're pulling, and stuff like that. So meters is really neat to see what the generator's doing, how happy the generator is, okay? So inverter enabled, we want it to work. Uh, when you hook the battery up for the first time, when you plug this in, have this main breaker turned off. Hook up the big plug in, Turn on the big breaker. Wait a little while, like 10 seconds. Push the inverter enable, the inverter will fire right up. If you threw some codes, like right now I have a fault warning code, if I push this button, it'll get rid of it. But it's gonna come right back because this thing has not synchronized, okay? So, inverter's enabled, search mode disabled. That means that the inverter would shut itself off at night when there's very little load and turn itself back on again. I don't use it very often. I don't think you will either, so I left it off. Search mode disabled, charger enabled, meaning whenever there's a generator or, or shore power, this is gonna turn into a charger and an inverter. It's enabled, we want that on. Uh, force charge state, don't need to worry about that. Desired mode operating. Clear faults and warnings, that would be cool, but I can't make that one go away.
okay uh, MPP MPP is the solar charge controller okay so we go into solar charge controller I'm going to go into advanced settings I'm going to go into charger settings it's on custom check the custom settings equalize support enabled uh, the voltage for that and then of course 60 volts 60 volts and about 53 52 to 54 is fine battery temperature compensation minus 5 that means a different temperature of the battery it'll charge at different voltages battery capacity 228 amp hour max charge rate okay I lower this always less than 100%. So 97, 95, something like that. It just, it's a little easier instead of just running at 100%, it's working at 97. I just feel better. Ch charge cycle, three stage, bulk, absorb, float. Okay, want that on, recharge. As soon as the batteries get down to 52, it's going to recharge. Uh, just custom settings, just want to look at some 54. So yeah, it's always going to be on because float is at 53 and recharge is at 52 so yeah it's always going to be on absorb time 240 minutes that's the max that does not mean it's going to do it every time okay and then the other things there uh, input settings this is for there's auxiliaries in here in case you had a hot water heater in the house that was electric it would turn it off and on when your batteries are full Okay, so input settings, auxiliary settings, that's for that, you know, say electric hot water heater or something like that, it'd turn on and the batteries are full. Uh, copy from, that's if you had more than two of these or something. Multi-unit config, that's if you had more than one. Restore defaults, nah, let's not do that. Advanced features, ugh, stay out of there. Okay, so we'll go right back, exit, exit, all the way to start. So, system settings, that's the very first one, right? So I push enter system settings let's open it so invert enabled so the inverters turned on ac charge enabled system mode operating cascading it means it just goes round and round connection names in case you want to name something else like just call this well i call it scp i call that mpp and i call that the sw because that's what's named on it okay let's back up again system settings Go all the way to the bottom of system settings. It talks about view fault list. View fault list, nothing in fault. Warning. There's a warning there. Of course, it wants to resynchronize. Okay, clear them. Can't clear them. They're still there. Device information. Don't have any of that. So that's about that in a nutshell. So let's have a little quick overview of it. Okay, and we'll talk about that. That's where your uh, solar or yeah, your solar panel input we'll talk about that in a minute so this here is your AC out so any loads that come out of the inverter this is the 30 amp breaker for it this is to bypass and this is your generator in so AC in or generator in it's turned on we can turn it off or turn on doesn't make any difference these two plugins I said were these here one breakers the top one breakers the bottom I don't remember which is which these are the four breakers for you to hook up your own uh, plug-ins in your house. You'll just have to kick a knockout down here, shove your wires in, put your hot on the bottom of whichever one's of this. Right back over there, there was a bus bar that was your white, your neutral, and right over here was the green ground, right? I did take and put a ground wire here to hook up your ground plate, which I hope you'll do, or ground rod. So it's earth grounded, keep it safe. Here's your plug-in that'll go to your cabin or, uh, or such. This will plug into your generator. If you have to change this to a different plug, we can kind of talk you through that. Because as soon as there's a generator plugged into here, it's going to show up on here saying AC in. It'll tell the voltage. And of course, when, I, when you go to meters, let's go into the, into the inverter. Inverter's 4048. Go into meters. So uh, battery voltage and temperature, load next to nothing, AC qualified qualifying there's nothing there is no power and there it is there's no AC power right line AC in frequency and stuff there's no power coming in so if you put power to this the generators running you're gonna see it on meters and you would also see how many watts is being used there too so you really know how many amps you're pulling out of your generator and how many watts okay this is the breaker for the battery this is the breaker for the charge controller 
This here is already pre-wired. Hopefully when you get it, the breakers will all be on and away you go. A lot of times in shipping, some of the breakers will get shut off, okay? So we'll put the cover and stuff all on it. You may have to open it just to have a look to make sure the breakers are on. That does happen from time to time, that a breaker does trip or that you bang them around and it'll, it'll trip kind of by itself. This mess of wires, this is your, your conduit, your flexible conduit that you're gonna bury from your cabin over to your uh, solar array. And then there's all the wires on the outside. This looks pretty gross, we'll get it cleaned up. So what'll happen is there's a red wire and there's a black wire. We'll put MC4 connectors on the end so that as soon as you get it, uh, your solar panels are 385 watt bifacial. You'll hook two panels together. So two panels in a series hook to this. So one half of the panel hooks onto here and then the second panel hooks onto the black one, right? And that'll feed back and go into one of those breakers that was up in that top corner in the solar charge combiner. So you have four strings of batch, or sorry, four strings of solar panels and then four breakers, okay? I will kind of set two panels out and just show you how we hook it together so it kind of makes some sense also. All right.